Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, nine o'clock ish. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. All right, you guys. So how do we get to today's topic? I am in a lot of entrepreneur groups and I am, you know, there are some groups that are better than others, but this group is really one of like the top groups that I'm in. And I saw this post and y'all I almost stroked out. So I'm going to read the post to you. Then we're going to get down and, and talk about it. Okay. So this person wrote, and oh, by the way, <laughs> If anybody is in this group and saw that post, if you are the person who posted it, nobody knows it was you except the people that were in the group. Don't take it personal. We're just going to really have some conversation because we got to clear up the misinformation out here. Okay. Now with that caveat out the way, let's go. They posted, my financial advisor said, whatever income is not reported to the IRS legally, in all caps, legally, you don't have to report it when filing your taxes. I'm a little scared to not report my earnings from Square and PayPal, although it's a little less than 20000 Is this true? Okay. Now, I don't mind people coming for and asking for information. What killed me, though is that out of all the people that were commenting, there was a good segment of these comments that was actually agreeing with this. So this is why I'm like, okay, no, we got to talk about it today. Even though we have talked about reporting income re before, we're really going to focus on this today to really help you gain some understanding of how this works. All right. So Title 26 of the Internal Revenue Code Section 61 essentially says you will report all of your gross income, okay, and derive from all of these various sources. And oh, by the way, that includes legal and illegal means. That means that if you do something shady and under the table to get your money by illegal means, that income is also reportable. The famous Al Capone said that the government can't take legal taxes from illegal money. Guess what the IRS said? Hold my beer. Okay. Because that's how he went to jail for tax evasion. Okay. So what, so what are you supposed to do? Okay. You are supposed to report all your income, period. I don't care if it's five bucks. You're supposed to report all of your income. That's what the law says. Now, where we get caught up is thinking that the IRS doesn't know and getting confused about reporting requirements. So you have the 1099 miscellaneous where if you earn $600 or more from a source, they're supposed to send you a 1099 miscellaneous. You're talking about whether it's, um, it's services or if like affiliate income, anything over $600, you get a 1099 miscellaneous. Then there's a 1099K that those are from your third party payers. That's your Amazon, your PayPal, Stripe, Square, those type of types of entities where they, you, if you have 200 transactions and $20,000, both of those thresholds have to be crossed in order for them to issue you a 1099K. Now in Massachusetts and Vermont, I do believe their state laws have changed to where they require a 1099K over $600 in their state. But otherwise, 1099K, 200 transactions and $20,000. And so, People believe that because it's not reported to the IRS, that you don't have to report the income yourself. That is wrong. It is incorrect. It is false. Thou shalt report all thy income. Okay? That is what the law says. And so when you don't report that income, that is tax evasion. That is what gets you in jail. So we have, you know, different types of things. So, um, so people are like, okay, well, you know, what about cash transactions? Yes. If you have a cash transaction, you still report the income. We have lots of cash businesses out here. You got hair salons, barbershops, you got car washes and laundromats, you know, like smaller restaurants, right? These types of businesses are all cash businesses. And yes, 
you must report your income even if it's in cash. We got people talking about they use um, you know, the cash app so they don't have to report. Again, that is not true. So, you know, I was I was thinking about um about to you know about to age myself, right? Y'all remember back in the day, Officer, Officer and a Gentleman, that movie where Lewis Gossett Jr. caught um, Richard Gere's character doing some shady stuff. And he was like, in every cycle, there's always one person that thinks they're smarter than me. Guess what? There is always somebody who thinks they're smarter than the IRS. Okay? I'm going to need for you all to cease and desist on this, right? Because, um, you know, when you're dealing in cash... And you are basically trying to hide this money. Again, that is tax evasion. And you think, well, the IRS doesn't know. Well, if the IRS tends to, you know, get something that says, hey, we need to investigate what's going on, then they start checking things out. They start checking out your bank account. They start checking out your credit report. They start checking out, okay, so you live in this place. You might have a mortgage. You might be paying rent. So you haven't missed a rent payment. You haven't missed a mortgage payment. You haven't missed a cell phone payment. You haven't missed any of these payments, but yet you don't have this money. There is something that's not right here. It's called a lifestyle audit where they start looking at that, looking at you and the people associated with you to say, okay, where is this money coming from? Okay, where is this? How are you funding this lifestyle if you're not reporting income to the IRS? And so that's when they start looking. Okay, and so when so then they build, they essentially build a case against you to say, hey, this is the evidence that we have that you're earning X amount of dollars, but you're not reporting it. And so then it'll be up to you to prove that you have either reported said income or that you didn't make this money. Good luck with that. The other thing I want to talk about with, with cash transactions is the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970. So essentially the Bank Secrecy Act was created to detect um, fraud and money laundering. Okay. And so that's where you get to, you hear about the transactions of $10,000 in cash or over. Then I started thinking about the Scarface movie, y'all. When y'all see, did y'all see Scarface? And then they started bringing all this money into the bank and the bank manager was like, holy cow, what am I going to do with all this cash? Okay. So when you have a, a cash transaction of $10,000 or more, you have to report that. So even if you go to the bank and withdraw your money, of over $10,000, then yeah, the bank has to report that and say, hey, you know, Jack withdrew $10,000. Yeah, it was his money, but he withdrew $10,000. Or, you know, if I go and deposit $10,000 into my account, then, you know, the bank has to say, hey, Lysandra deposited $10,000 or more into her account. And so where people try to get smart is, okay, well, I'll deposit $8,000 on this day and I'll deposit $2,000 on that day. And then I'll go over here to this bank and I'll deposit a couple thousand dollars over here. And that's going to be cool. No. If banks start to suspect that you are structuring, they are required to report it. But this also goes back to your third party payers, like your PayPal's, your Stripes and Square and all that, right? Because see, what people do, and I've had people tell me this, is they'll get up to, you know, about $18,000 in their PayPal account, and then they'll just go open another PayPal account. Okay, um, PayPal tracks IP addresses, right? And so if PayPal suspects that you might be structuring, they're required to report that to the IRS as well. So what I need for you all to get is that you can try and go around the government if you want to, but it's just a matter of time before you get busted, OK, and so when they're going through and like I said, they're they're looking at your lifestyle. You're not reporting this income, but they looking like, oh, you sure are going shopping a lot or who look at that nice house that you have, you know, four hundred thousand dollar house and you haven't reported any income. Hmm. Right. 
And so, um, what's the boy's name from Jersey Shore? Um, I didn't watch the show, but I heard about it on the news. He just went to jail. Him and his brother went to jail for structuring, right? Because his brother, I think, was an accountant. And so his brother was helping him to do this whole structuring thing, which is illegal. So, you know, you're... You are required to report all your income. I, you know, I don't care how you feel about paying taxes. Nobody likes to pay taxes. I don't care if you think taxation is theft, all of those other things. The fact is you are required to report your income. Whether or not you get whatever kind of forms, whether or not it's actually reported to the IRS, that is the requirement. And as tax professionals, you know, it is our job to tell you, hey, you have to report this income. And I just fired a client because she did not report, want to report all her income. Like, I'll, my name is not about to be on that. Because all because you don't want to do what you're supposed to do. That's not happening. So, uh, so I really want you to take this and just understand that, you know, it doesn't matter if you get a form or not. Now, if you get a form, you know, it's sitting at the IRS waiting for you and people still get to get confused about that as well. You know, if you get any kind of tax form in the mail, whether it's a W-2, 1099 miscellaneous, 1099-K, 1099-R, whatever, 1098-T, 1098, all those forms, there is a copy sitting at the IRS waiting for you to file and match that up. And so when that match doesn't happen, then that's when you get letters to say, hey, we've adjusted your, your tax filing and you owe us X amount. Because they have this automated um, underreporting system to where they're matching these forms to your filing. And if that match never comes, that's when they come for you. It's usually like a year later and say, hey, you owe us X amount because this is what someone else has reported that they paid you. And yeah, so you need to do that. Um, what else? I wanted to make sure I, re I covered everything that I wanted to cover on this. So, oh, and especially for my e-com squad, okay? My e-commerce people understand, um, you know, with your, you know, Amazon, eBay, you know, uh, you get paid by uh, PayPal, or Stripe, those are the, uh, PayPal and Stripe, I think, are the, the main ones, the main payment third-party payers that e-commerce people use, okay? So again, even though you might be under the reporting threshold, you are still required to report your income. That's it. I don't care if you don't think that the IRS knows why we even plan them kinds of games. Because see, then when you get caught, See, that's the thing. When you have to pay the piper, then you want to cry, woe is me, right? Only thing you got to do, just go ahead and pay your taxes and call it a day. Set aside 30% of your income. This is all you have to do. And if you do that and stay on the right side of the law, this is not even an issue. But it becomes an issue when you get terrible, terrible advice when you come to the Facebook groups when you go to Google and YouTube University and you get some jacked up information. Okay. And I will even tell you that even the information, the right information on Google and YouTube is not complete information for you. I do these every day. And even if you go and watch all of my videos, it is still not complete tax advice for you because I, nobody's looking at your whole picture. So this is why I constantly tell you, you cannot go get Facebook, YouTube, and Google educated about your taxes. Do not confuse your Google search with our expertise. Just don't do it.com. Okay? Pay for competent financial accounting tax advice. Okay? So that's it for today, folks. I really hope you take this one to heart. It, we're still filing taxes at the time of this video. It is still tax season. Please don't play yourself when it comes to the government. Okay? Plain and simple. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, we air Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And you can come here to get your questions answered about your home business taxes. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time. Bye.